Hello there, everyone. It's kind of funny that I saw Drive before I have a license. I would do a drum, da dum dum, because that was a horrible joke. Anyway, this movie has been recommended to me from a couple of people for quite a long time, pretty much since I've been on YouTube for a couple years now, and I've just always kind of went like, ah, it's gonna, I don't really care about it, it's whatever, it's Drive Ryan Gosling, ooh, who cares? But I just finally watched it the other day, and I am glad that I did, because, man, this was surprisingly good. I mean, it starts off nice and chill. It's just a quick conversation on the phone. It's a little bit similar to The Transporter, as in the beginning a little bit, because it's just a driver setting up for a robbery, and he seems to have things in a very articulate, particular kind of way. He's got a little cop radio scanner thing, so he can keep track of some of the conversation. He's just got a regular-looking car. He's, you know, seems like he's got a little timer for the people that he's helping to rob. He's just trying to drive. And yeah, he, the robber comes in. Okay, the, both the robbers get in there and they just go. And it's not a huge action packed chase scene or anything that goes on. It's just like kind of a chill getaway. Like he, it's tension filled sort of because there's cops around their area. There's a helicopter around. Uh, there was, you know, mention of their type of car on the scanner thing. So it's, you know, it's possible that they could get pulled over or tracked or something. And no, he just, uh, he just continues on his way. He ends up going to like a parking garage where it seemed like there was like a stadium or something nearby. There's a huge event. So there's a lot of people around and he's able to kind of blend into the crowd and just kind of walk away and get off scot-free. And get off scot free. And he might have, I'm not sure if the robbers there got away. They don't really go back on that. So it doesn't really matter. And it turns out that he himself, you know, Ryan Gosling, he's just like kind of a, just a driver uh, for action, for cars, like stunt, like a stunt driver, basically. And, you know, crashing into things and stuff. And uh, you got Hal, you got Brian Cranston in this, you got Ron Perlman in this. And you get to figure out a little bit of stuff with them. He's kind of like a, that's kind of like a, I was going to say a mentor figure, but that's probably not accurate. Ryan Gosling's character does not say that many words at all. He is, I love how chill he is. He's just, he's just around and gives a response. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like he's just, he's just very chill. A lot of long pauses before he gives a response properly. I like this character. It's very it's it's a slow pace, chill kind of thing. There's not as much dialogue, but the camera makes sure to focus on certain details. The way that he looks is just really good. I mean, I'm surprised he's not cast as like a serial killer in some movies. I'm not saying that he looks like a serial killer in this, but in some scenes, you gotta admit the stare that he has is like rival to a Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm thinking of a little bit. I'm like, dude, this dude's a machine. He is, woof. But then there's also like, but then there's also emotion that can be you know taken off from his blanks. And it's not a blank stare. It's a stare, but it's like a a blank stare would not be accurate. But he's not emoting much. There's not a smile every time. He might do a little slight smirk. But his conversation with like the neighborly girl, you know, he doesn't really say much. Uh, there's typical areas where in other movies or shows they would have a conversation like they're in the same complex on the elevator she's doing laundry he's going up they could have had a conversation there but nope and when he like is helping her out with stuff he's not saying much he's not offering much he's not inserting himself too much but he's around he is a nice guy but he's not going out of his way to do stuff for her just really good kind of character stuff going on there. And as you go on, you're, you're kind of figure, you're trying to figure out where is this going because he started out with a robbery. So is he are we going to see a lot more of that kind of thing where he gets caught up in the wrong type of thing with a robbery crew or something, which isn't exactly what happens. You got Poe Dameron's in this too. You got Oscar Isaacs. He's in this. Uh, the father to the little boy to the you know husband to the girl next door that he's hanging out with, which... There's also a great moment where they're driving and she says, because at one point he said that, you know, that's his father when she was referring to her, her husband. But then she at some point she says, my husband's getting out of jail tomorrow and he just stops the car and he's just staring away. She's looking at him like, oh, shit, did I did I touch a nerve? What happened here? Like, there's no dialogue here going on. And then he just continues driving. But he. Without any words and without giving that much facial expressions, express like husband was the key word there. She did not say husband before. 
he is clearly developing some kind of feelings for her, but then, and then is told that the husband is returning. And it's like, okay, well, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. We'll see what happens. And there's a moment too, where uh, the husband, where he could have, it sounded, it seemed like he was going to, you know, beat the shit out of him for helping out the girl while he was away. Because obviously he would assume that he's trying to put his moves onto the girl, but no, that actually just kind of gets, it's addressed a little bit, but it's not directly to you. And then it just kind of, he's just clearly a neighborly friend next door and he's not really trying to put a whole bunch of moves on her. He does care about her. He does like her, but he's not like trying to steal her. He's not worried about winning her. There's not much that we get from him in that type of motivation and what his backstory is. So this is a, this is just a really good fucking film. Like this, it's a it's such a slow pace, but there's a lot of like tension moments. There's a lot of good focus on certain things when they're doing some of their chases uh, later on in the film. What they're choosing to focus on is pleasing because it's not just showing this really long, overly drawn out, complicated, you know chase going on here it's just showing some important moments it, you, you see how chill he is in the beginning movie when the cops are after him and then when there's this one situation a little bit later it's not even like worse of a situation really but he does seem a little bit tense with it and he's trying to figure things out and they just do a really good fucking job here man i fucking love this one there's a couple of twists that happen throughout this like with the robbery uh, he realizes that the father is in with some bad people a little bit and he tries to help him out he's like okay well you need a driver i'm gonna help you out with this and then hopefully those guys will leave you alone because he got the crap beat out of him in front of his kid and so our guy here wants to help uh, we don't know like we, again we don't really know that much about this character's history he's just a really good driver and he seems to be able to fight pretty well but he doesn't seem like he's like a ninja or martial artist or anything or just like a super fighter, bro. He just seems like he's pretty skilled at fighting. And he only, I think the only time he took on two people sort of at once. It was more one after the other where one was sneaking in the bathroom of a hotel. He takes him out and then he takes the next guy out. And yeah, it wasn't like a huge, you know, oh, there's like five guys around me and I'm fighting them and seeing how I could take them all on at once. Uh, basically five on one. No, we don't see any of that. So he has the impression that he's that he could take on that many at once, but we don't see that. So we don't actually know like his power level, we could say, but he is just really skilled at some things that he's doing, but it's very restrained in how they do it. And so I, I, I don't know, there's the music too, man, in this was, you know, placed pretty well during the whole intro thing. Another thing I forgot, the intro sequence with this uh, when they're doing the robbery is done so well there i don't think there's any music playing there's no action music it's very quiet you're just hearing the car you're hearing some other cars go by some you know slight sirens you're hearing the radio a little bit even the robbers in the back aren't saying anything and i'm just this movie's pretty fucking good man and as as it goes you're seeing him it, he is getting a little bit attached to the roommate but it's not it's not in the typical way that it would in any other movie and like it just it just goes pretty darn good you know ron perlman's character in them and hal the like hal seems like a really nice guy but he is he's kind of a you know klutzy person sort of and he ends up getting into bad situations he fucks things up here and there and it ends up messing things up with him too and gets him to a point where our driver here he gets he gets angry and he you know is like the first time you see him get pr pretty darn angry and almost you think he's going to kill him, but he doesn't. No, he does care about the guy a little bit, but without showing that, like, oh, I care about you or anything. No, no, no. He just like, you need to get out of here and never fucking come back because they're going to kill you. And, you know, he, act he unfortunately doesn't get away. Ugh. The the guy that uh, is like like working with one of the bad guys and it's really his. They show earlier that he has known how I'm just calling him how. OK, his name is Shannon in the movie i think his name's shannon i'm calling him hal from malcolm in the middle okay brian cranston's character and they just like oh does a handshake and slits his forearm up and it bleeds him out really easy oh, that he got his like forearm split and he bleeds out that was more grotesque to me than when they're in the elevator and ryan gosling he it's like stomps this guy's head in he boom 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 boom, boom stomps this guy's head in i was like yeah all right but just the slit of the forearm cut gave me the heebie-jeebies, man. I don't know why. The difference 
is weird. A girl got shot in the head in the film and like shown pretty well. It's like, eh, goes over my head easily enough, whatever. But the slit of the forearm, ah, goosebumps. Ugh, weird. But uh, this is a really good movie, and I want to watch it again. Uh, this is almost like a superhero type of origin story without giving too much about his real backstory this would just be his first steps that he takes like in his story to be like a hero or something i'm imagining him being like a super driver <laughs> for like if he was on the avengers or an agents of shield or something he's like i'm the i'm the cool driver character that doesn't say that much that can get us out of a thing and if i get attacked by a couple of goons i can take them uh probably not he probably wouldn't be the one to go out of his way to save somebody necessarily he did seem to show a lot of care for uh, the child and the girl, but that could just be because, you know, he likes her. He maybe, so we don't, since we don't know about his past, we don't know how he feels about kids or how he was as a kid to, you know, why he is doing this. Cause he felt to be motivated by their lives are in danger or the, you know, the husband, uh, you, you took away a, a boy's father. Uh, like he seemed really pissed off about that to the guys that are doing that. And there's uh, another great scene too, where he, takes out one of the guys that beat the crap out of Oscar Isaac's character here. And he uh, just walks in and there's like a whole bunch of ladies in the room that are all pretty much naked. And he's just in there like, eh, eh, eh. it's like a dressing room kind of thing. But he just goes in and smashes the dude's hand with a hammer. And then is like, you know, beating the crap out of him in the middle of the thing and, you know, threatening him. And all the women are seriously just kind of sitting around looking so uninterested they're just like picking at their nails they're just looking around whatever uh he's like you know call whatever uh, he wanted to get to know the real boss which turned out to be ron perlman's character which was a little bit of a you know twist of rooney there and they just okay here it is we called them whatever like they just looked so like the dudes are like Ugh, on the floor like getting effed up and he's <laughs> all the women are just not like as if uh, just a, this is a normal tuesday and nothing's different, whatever, who cares? He's getting his ass kicked here, who cares? So I just thought that was funny, because I guess in the way Black Angus told me about it was that uh, the director probably saw this as a cliche thing that happens where there's naked women in the room on screen, and they, you know, something, something violent happens, and all the women run out, and they're naked for a brief few seconds on screen, but that this director wanted to maybe do it where they're in the room, and they're, there's a lot more booby time i guess on the screen but the women aren't all running around and freaking out either they're just kind of chilling so i don't know i just thought that was an interesting little element to add to it as well and like you know, making our character seem pretty cool there he seemed like very much like he he ends up calling and talking to ron perlman's character who is like a mob boss and our guy is definitely not and he's not in the game in that sort of way uh, they have like a, he's got a million dollars of his money uh from this you know botched job thing that happened and he's just like wanting to take him out because you know the the guy got killed the guy's father got killed and it's like did he even did our guy even really see him as much of a friend or what but i don't know just really fucking good man really good i want to talk about some of these films that i'm watching now i definitely want to talk about in like a live stream but i want to rewatch them again first because they're pretty good i got a lot i got a lot we can we can pull from this stuff so that's all i'm gonna say for now though because then i'll just keep on going on and on make a really long freaking video here so i'm gonna end it there and see you guys later